Well, welcome to Tips and Tricks for Navigating Around Unity 3D. My name is Joel and I'm going to be your host through this. These are some kind of lesser known, some more well known ways about navigating through Unity. Some things that we found very useful when making our game The Pedestrian and some things that are just pretty kind of neat and underused. So without further ado, let's move right into the first tip. The first one is the F key. The F key focuses on an object that you have selected. So let's say I select this guy over here and then I hit F. It's going to move right up on that object so that it's front and center and uh, we're focused on it. You can even do it from your hierarchy. So if you look over on the left side, I click on this electric box. I don't see it, but when I hit F, it brings me up to it. But you can also hit F when you're moving an object. So let's say I'm moving this pillar and oh, it's out of view. So if I hit F, I'm re, re looking at it. And if I hit F, I'm looking at it again. So it's useful for kind of following an object um, as you're moving it around if you take it out of the screen. Now for a general camera movement, these are pretty standard. Clicking and dragging right click uh, pivots around yourself. So it's like you're ahead and you're looking around the room. If you, let me focus on this object. So I hit F on it. If I'm holding Alt and then I left click, it pivots around the selected object. Zooming is either the scroll wheel or holding Alt and dragging with right click. Um, to do this fly around mode, you just hold right mouse button and use W, A, S, and D to kind of pilot your way around the map. So if I'm just flying, I'm holding W to go forward, S to go backward, A left, D right. And you can just kind of steer with moving your mouse around, which like normal pivots your camera. So those are just your basic navigating around your scene tips. For some more movement based tips on objects, if you have an object selected and we're in a uh, transform mode, which is short key is W, E is rotate, so rotate, R is scale, and T is this like box scale, what do they call it, rectangle tool. Um, where you can scale it along um, different kind of axes. Um, but anyway, if we're in the transform tool, which is the moving one, you can snap vertices to each other. So if I hold V and click on the corner, whilst I'm holding V and holding left mouse button, I could snap this pivot corner to any vertice in my scene. So you can see it's just kind of hopping around to all the corners and nooks and crannies of all my objects. And so yeah, that's super useful if you want to try and line things up. Like say I make a new one of these and I want to snap that to there. That way they're like right next to each other. These two vertices are snapped together. And if I wanted to, I could give it a bit of space but I know that those are gonna be lined up. So Z, Z switches between pivot and center. So the gizmo either goes to the pivot, which in this case is in the bottom right corner or in the center of the object, which is obviously in the center. Um, a way to kind of move the gizmo around is if you're holding V. So, you know, holding V, we're like selecting our pivot corner for, uh, for vertice snapping. But if we don't click on the square, but instead click on the gizmo, you can actually kind of move your gizmo around. So let's say I'm really close up here, but I want to move this object. Well, I can hold V, let's get a better view. I can hold V and move the object like this, but the pivot's down there. So I don't need to have the pivot in view. I can kind of move the pivot to where I want it at, at any given moment, just by holding V. A useful tip for selecting items. Um, sometimes you have a selection that you want to use quite a bit. So let's say these four little strips of paper. 
I select all four of these strips of paper. Let me get that V off. And I want to use these all the time. Let's actually grab the little tacks as well. Holding shift while left clicking to select multiple. So I have this selection. Now what you could do is you could make a empty game object and stick all these items into that empty game object and then click on that to get this selection. But another neat trick is using control alt and a number. So in this case, control alt one will assign it to the one slot. Now this saves the selection. So if I take it away, take my selection away and then use control shift one, it selects those objects again. Now they don't have to be anywhere fancy in the grid or in the hierarchy. They could be any object we want. So let's say this one and this one and this guy. I can do control alt two, which will assign it to the second slot. And then when I want to go back to it, I just do control shift two to select those three objects again, or in this case, control shift one, and that regained that selection. You have all the way up to zero. So 10 slots to save selections. And that is extremely useful when you're doing one thing over and over again, you can do control shift one, control shift two, switch back and forth, move things around, tweak it, all that good stuff. It's, uh, it's actually quite great. For some neat uh, window navigation. So if you imagine all these little tabs or little windows in our editor, uh, if you want to maximize any window, hover your mouse inside the window and do shift space. That'll maximize it, shift space, minimize it. So if I go over the inspector shift space, I get the full inspector, shift space goes back. Now the console, which is empty, console. It's very useful for optimizing your screen space um, because you can see what you want to see in full screen and you don't have to see the stuff that uh, isn't necessary. So shift space, useful. One useful thing is locking the inspector window. You right click on the tab up in the upper right corner. You right click on the tab and you click le lock. Now what lock does is it keeps this window always open. So no matter what you're clicking on, it's always going to show the inspector as if you are selecting the no reset toot. Um, that's great for if you have to move things around and you have to adjust settings on one object when you don't want everything to always be switching around, you always want to be looking at the one object. So that's just extremely useful. It's also super useful if you are trying to assign multiple items to a list. So normally if I uncheck it, as soon as I grab one object, I can assign it to a list. That's fine. That works great. But if I want to grab two, what you have to do is left click and then shift left click to get multiple. And then you click over and drag it and Oh, I'm not looking at what I want to be looking at to assign it. Ah, uh, so what you do is you go to the first thing and you lock it and then you can click left click shift right or shift left click and click and drag and Oh, it's here. And so I can assign this. So it's the only way to assign multiple um, items to an array is if you lock the window first and then group select whatever you want to select and then put it back in. Um, otherwise, your inspector window will change and the place that you were trying to assign the items uh, is now gone. While well, that can be done by clicking lock here, there's also a handy little lock right there that you can click on in the top right. If you're looking at my mouse, the top right, you can click on that. One way you can clean up a messy scene is by assigning things to different layers. If you assign them to different layers, they can be hidden and revealed uh, at your whim. So let's say we have all of this stuff in here, but a lot of times we're working with just a few things. Um, so you can go up to the layers drop down in the top right and hide items. So if I hide this default layer, then everything else that's not in the default layer will still be here. So all my boxes are still here. I can't click or interact with any of the other stuff. It keeps everything nice and clean and orderly. 
And then when I need to show it again, I just reveal default and we're good to go. Uh, finding assets can sometimes be a bit tricky. You have our project view down here and it's, you know, stuffed with folders within folders within folders. Uh, it could be a bit of a mess. So one tip is using these little, these little uh, modifiers or filters for your search. So we can search by type. We can search for meshes and all of the meshes will pop up. You can also add in prefabs to that if you hold control and click on prefabs. So now it'll be all the meshes and all the prefabs. Uh, you can control and hit texture and it'll add in all the textures to the search. So now we have textures, prefabs, and meshes. Um, and what this is doing is it's just putting this little syntax into our search bar. So you can actually type this out. So if I do T colon and then space mesh, it'll actually grab all the mesh things. So you don't have to use this drop down to select this. You can type it in. Um, beside that is labels. Labels are a way that you can add custom filters to your objects. So if I go to say this garage flags mesh, I can add the label tutorial onto it. It's assigned the tutorial label. Go up to here, hit L colon tutorial, and it will give you only the objects that have the tutorial tag. So it added my label tutorial to the mesh, the default material that it generated, as well as the import settings. So that's a way that you can search for things with labels. Sometimes you just want to know what's using this material. So what you can do is right click on the material itself and go to find references and see. It'll add in a long kind of reference syntax and show you every object that's using the material. So all of these little boxes, that box up there, that box there, and this box here are all using that material. So that could be extremely useful for say like switching out materials. It's like, oh, I have an updated version. I have an updated version of a material, but I don't want to get rid of the old one. So I want to select all the objects that are using the old material and then switch it out with the new one. So if I say this cardboard, I want to find references in scene. I select all the references in scene, and then I switch them all to the cardboard white material, which then makes all the materials that was using the normal cardboard, they're now white. Super useful for switching things out or just selecting and seeing what's using a material or a mesh or a prefab or really anything. So that's a little rundown on some various tips and tricks on Unity that we found useful when developing our game, The Pedestrian. If you're curious about The Pedestrian, it's a 2.5D puzzle platformer set in the world of signs in a vast and moving world. We will be having a release date trailer coming out here pretty soon, so keep an eye out for that. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see uh, when the game will be releasing. Follow us on all of our social medias to get little updates on our progress with the development. And besides that, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.